Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about learning English fast and I know a lot of you guys are struggling to move from intermediate to advanced to upper intermediate and this has been my problem as well. And um, I'm gonna talk about the things that really help me move from, you know, I learn English, I read in English, but I can't really speak it. I don't really understand native speakers sometimes. So I'm kind of in the middle. I kind of know English, but I can't really use it. So I will try to take you today lift you up from your intermediate and uh, show you ways or where to go if you want to become advanced very soon. So if you're interested in speaking English like a native speaker, continue watching this video and make sure to watch it up to the very end and make sure to smash the like button right now if you think that the topic is useful. I'm waiting for you to smash the like button. Good. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So first of all, make sure you have a very clear goal and a target. So before I was 14 years old, I was like, English is amazing. My parents tell me to learn English. Great, I'm gonna do that. But at the age of 14, I went to the UK and I saw a completely different life. I saw people chasing various goals. I tried British food. I saw the culture and I was like, I want to be a part of that world. I want to be a part of this Western world because I was born and raised in Russia. It all seemed completely different from where I came from. And I knew that the only way for me to become a part of that world was first to learn English and to speak it like a native speaker and second succeed in my studies because English is just a way to integrate into society. English is just an instrument that will get you somewhere. And apart from English, you also need something else, right? Because you don't want to end up just being a great English speaker. You want to end up being a great English speaker talking about a topic of your expertise. And this is when I realized, okay, so this is where I move from just learning English like grammar, vocabulary. This is where I move to learning about something in English. And uh, because I was 14, my dream was to go and study in Great Britain. So I started researching universities in the UK. I started researching scholarships and I started to use my intermediate English for it. I started to read articles and this way I was able to improve my vocabulary. And because I was so passionate about this topic. It wasn't really a struggle for me. I wanted to do that. I waited for that one hour in the evening that I had to do my research. So and this is something I would advise you to do. Find a topic that interests you the most. Set a goal. For example, complete a course on photography or complete a course in productivity in English and then go towards it, move towards it. And always check back with yourself. Am I enjoying what I do? Am I enjoying my goal? Because this is the most important thing. The next advice might be a little counterintuitive, but people keep telling you read a lot, read a lot, read a lot. Doesn't really work with English because you know what I noticed happened to me when I started reading a lot, especially when I started reading a lot on a topic that is professional. There were so many words that are specific to that topic, like medicine or whatever. I couldn't pronounce them. I kind of read them. I understood what they meant. But would you ever check like OBGYN, how to pronounce it? I was like OBGYN or whatever. And uh, that was the wrong way to pronounce it. So it is really important that you not only read, but you mostly focus on listening to things in English on your topic. So this way you are learning how to pronounce words because that's really important. Because again, the problem that I had, I knew a lot of specific words related to pregnancy, for example, because I was first time pregnant here in the US. So I read a lot, but then I came to my doctor and I tried to say something and she didn't get me because I was pronouncing these words incorrectly. And this is when I realized I should have listened more uh, instead of just reading. The so next advice, don't translate word for word. Sometimes you're like, oh my God, she just used this word that I didn't understand. Let's just go back to this and let me translate the whole phrase. No, this way you're gonna lose interest. So if you're reading a book and uh, you know, every paragraph you may be meeting like two or three words that you haven't seen before, that's totally fine. If you still understand the context, if you still understand the topic of the book, you still understand what's going on, then just let them pass by. Let those words stay there in the book. No need to translate everything. Just make sure you understand the general idea. And this advice is, by the way, really useful if you're just about to take an English language test because in English language tests, they use the strategy a lot. They 
use a lot of difficult words that you don't really need to understand. They're doing this to confuse you, to make you scared, but the questions that they ask, they don't really relate to those words. Then They relate to general idea. Because I just recently took TOEFL, I can tell you that there were so many words that I didn't understand and I've lived in the US since 2016. And uh, they just want you to feel overwhelmed with this academic vocabulary. But then they ask you questions uh, to answer which you don't really need to understand those complicated words. If you're learning English to live in a foreign country, then forget about writing. Again, this might sound a little counterintuitive, but what you need to analyze right now is why do you need English? If you're gonna stay in your country, and uh, all you're gonna do is write academic papers, then yes, but you need to kind of allocate those percentages to different areas of English that you're gonna use. So for example, I live in the US, 80% of my time I speak English because I record videos, I talk to people, this means that I need to dedicate 80% of my time to speaking and listening and only 20% of my time to reading and writing because I want to work on the skills that I need the most. So if you're planning on staying in your country and write academic papers in English, then yes, 80% of your time dedicated to English should be uh, focusing on reading and writing because this is the way you hone the skill and you don't really need to care about speaking and listening. But if you plan on moving somewhere, if you plan on working in an English speaking environment, then you totally need to focus on speaking and listening. The next advice is to take an online course. And we've already touched upon this uh, a little earlier in this video, but you really need to ask yourself, what am I interested in? Apart from English, what am I interested in? So for example, I am interested uh, in becoming more productive because I have a baby, I have three YouTube channels, I have my Instagram, TikTok companies, so many things going on in my life. How do I stay productive? How do I allocate my time uh, depending on uh, what goals I have? And uh, by the way, there is an amazing course on Skillshare that uh, can help you with that. The course on productivity that I really like on Skillshare is called Productivity Today, Managing Attention in the Digital Age. I know all of us are learning English digitally and you have so many things going on in your laptop. I have all of my messengers, I have my email, I have people calling me all the time. So I think it's really important to have have dedicated time slots when you're doing something to have dedicated time slots during the week so for example one day you're focusing on your listening another day you're focusing on your speaking um, so you know just planning things ahead and staying productive and staying on top of your routine is really really important and this is why I recommend this course on Skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration design, photography, video freelancing, and productivity. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and you're getting access to classes for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 followers who hit a link below will get a free premium membership on Skillshare for two months so you can totally explore the course that I'm talking about for free. The next advice, forget about perfect grammar because Whenever you try to be perfect in anything in a language, that slows you down because your brain is like, okay, I need to say this phrase in English. Oh, and I also want to make sure I sound perfect. And uh, this is just too much for your brain because there is so much going on. You need to think about your ideas. You need to think about how to say them in English and then you want to sound perfect. Maybe you want to use this past perfect continuous tense. Don't do it. You can try to use it later. I still refrain from using it because that's too much for my brain. I just want to sound simpler and easier so yeah don't overcomplicate and don't try to sound perfect it's totally okay to make mistakes and this is what I'm here for you know I'm telling you about the right ways to say different things about different ways to say things but please don't be perfect you're gonna start saying something in a wrong way but then you would hear people answering you you would hear back from people and you would understand oh that didn't sound right but you started a conversation and that's the most important thing you will correct yourself later but please please start the next advice is try to listen to everything. Remember uh, I was telling you about like reading stuff and then knowing how to pronounce it? So try to listen to audiobooks, try to listen to online courses, try to listen to videos. Just surround yourself with listening to things in English and that will really, really help you hone your listening skills 
and your speaking skills as well. And the last but not the least, practice English every day. That's the key to success. Maybe it's 15 minutes, maybe it's 20 minutes, maybe it means just watching my videos daily, maybe you're, you've downloaded a, an audiobook and you listen to a chapter per day, or you started a course on Skillshare and you listen to a lecture a day. This is really important to be consistent and to do something every single day. Thank you so much guys for watching this video up to the very end. I hope it helped you become more enthusiastic about learning English and uh, I hope it helped you to create a plan in your head on how you're gonna go from intermediate to advanced and I hope I gave you some directions. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and smash the like button if you enjoyed this content and uh, follow me on Instagram Lingua Marina if you want to practice English daily because I make stories daily about English there and uh, Lingua Marina on TikTok. See you soon, bye bye.